Okay, I will start. Um, I don't really have that much to say. I think you guys have heard it all before. Um, the first Chris that went, definitely, like you said, you were nervous. But um, you didn't come across that way. Throw away the papers. I mean, like, really, like, seriously, your delivery was really good. And, and that's what, you know, that's what it's going for. It was engaging, like, you were a little bit cocky, like, you sauntered around a little bit, it got people like, interested. Like, that's, that's what you want when you go. Like, that's how you have to throw people off balance to get them to pay attention, you know? Like, usually when you go to watch presentations, at least me as a scientist, like, I go through an eight or a 12 hour day of presentations back to back. Like, you have to get me interested, or I'm just gonna zone out. You know, so you, you have to do something like innovative. You have to constantly push the envelope. I mean, maybe it's not the same in architects. I don't know what your profession is like, but like that's, that's how you get people interested, you know. And, uh, just, you know, like, I, you never introduced yourself, but I'm sure like all of your technical difficulties that you have, you'll never, ever, ever repeat. Like, I, my thesis presentation, the computer crashed when I was saving it, and I had no images. And as a microscopist, like that's my profession is, is visual, and uh, I didn't get it like you know with, with no images whatsoever. And I I take I, I don't print out um, transparency anymore, but I use even print out transparency to take. I mean nobody has other projectors anymore. But I have you know I have it on my thumb drive. I have three CDs. I have you know my computer. It, it will never fail again. <laughs> relevant information. <laughs> um, I think that Chris number one, well actually all of you guys um, did a really good job uh, explaining your ideas. You guys have really strong ideas to begin with, which you, which you still take further and further. Um, first, Chris, I would say um, just push it further. Uh, you had a great, great start. Um, and your final um, Final image, well, I don't know if it was the final image, but it was one image where you had all the, the volumes um, scattered that were coming out of the building. I would show um, circulation into those because of the, the neuron um, has it, the node and then the, the uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, neuron, or the neuron and the node, and it, you, you related that to the circulation, so I, I'd love to see how. I think circulation is a big part of architecture, and you can articulate articulate that in a certain way, um, as far as how you move from each one of those spaces that came out of the building. So um, I would explore that even further. Um, Chris, number two, you you guys, Chris and Mike, you guys had very similar projects, but um, both um, taken in a different way. Um, and, I, and when I think of stereoscopic images, because um, they relate to architecture, but they're very, uh, they're very much related to painting because you have to view them from one perspective. Um, and I'm not so sure I have a critique to that as much as um, I'd be careful with that because uh, there is architecture which you do view with from one perspective, but at the same time, um, well, I mean that's a, that's a good question. Should you view architecture from uh, should we should we as architects be painters? Should we create one view that's like the perfect view and everybody wants to be at that view? Or um, should you try and create these multitude of spaces um, that gives that same impression of the painting itself? So, um, it's a tough question. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of examples of uh, architecture and illusion. Um, the Campidoglio in Rome. It uses a force perspective, like um, if your building was using the uh, uh, receiving space. Um, and uh, some of the Parthenon in Greece, um, in Athens, it, it uses excess, the columns kind of recede, so it makes it look like it's much taller. So the, the curve of the column itself is an illusion. So um, I would try to uh, look at all the other precedents of illusion itself and see how you can use some of those techniques or um, kind of uh, add on to those techniques or develop something new in that sense. Um, and Christine, I uh, was really interested by the two sides that you had in the relationship. Um, uh, I mean, it seemed kind of uh, almost prison-like in a way, but um, 
I, I wanted to know what would bring this, um, what 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 relationship there would be between the the dream like the sleeping side and the viewing side. Um, if there was a further programmatic element to, I guess, um, I, if it was you going in and then you like leave your profile or something, and anybody can watch your dreams. And there's a lot of different issues that that go on with like security and who's watching your dreams and this and that, but um, I would think about those and how that might also um, articulate the space in that way. Um, but I thought it was really strong that you had the two, like the, the diagram that you had, the brain on the right side, and then how you articulated that with your art question was really strong. Um, Uh, but you guys will like learn more about precedent studies and stuff like that. How you can like either do something of like a two D or like three D in different spaces. You know, do you want like the one like the one shot? Like us, we were just discussing. Um, we went to see the uh, Salt Institute, and there's one place in the sand. Yeah. Well, there's I mean they have they use like the A B patterns for the columns. Um, so they just like look, they look different even though they're like or they look the same but even they're different scale. And then when you look out towards the water. Like the, that one moment that the architect set up to say that the person walking across this, uh, like the courtyard, is going to be at the same height as the water in the background, like things like that. Like that's why context, context as well is like so important. So it's kind of like just reiterating that you guys will learn like once you get once you start like getting to these type of buildings or into custom study, like the techniques that they use and how to apply them to like your your designs. Um, I think, um, Kind of like everything else that we said, just uh, presentation-wise, be sure you speak clearly so we can understand what you're saying, like articulate the words a little bit. And, uh, come on. Like I thought, you um, when you did the sun studies, that was really great. Um, yeah. Because daylight is a huge factor in um, architecture, so I would encourage everybody to do sun studies just to see that how the light comes into the space. You can do it easily with SketchUp. Right? Yeah. There's, you know, there's that little slider bar. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a very, very important tool for this area. But what's important, though, is, is how that sun, though, filters to the interior. And so, you know, the sun, sun, sun studies sort of on the exterior, you know, you could argue are sort of the most important. Well, you I mean, know what's going on in the exterior. Right, right, right. The surrounding site, so. Right. I was just going to, like, you thought about that, though. Would you have to, like, could you have, like, a a definite like program that you start doing with your interior rendering and just see how it really affects the space that you create but you know that you know that that is that did not that um, all you guys had a very fantastic person in front of campus like you kind of um, program but I really enjoyed it and I especially enjoyed like your like I kind of saw your like style Well, I, the two comments on like the how like at the end you had all the volume just. 